The door to your destiny. Calling over comfort. The door to your destiny. Calling over comfort. Well, it's April. Uh, we're three, four months in already into the year. And, and if you're like me, um, whether you're a believer or not, you know, we, we like to start our year with like a word, like a vision. You know, we reprioritize, we assess our lives, we evaluate, right? And so we usually settle on, hey, this is the year of this, or this is what I feel God is calling me to do this year. This is the purpose. This is what you're wanting to do. And we kind of wrap our hearts and our minds around vision, around a few major goals, something you sense God is wanting to make a priority in your life over the course of this year, right? A vision, a purpose, a plan, a word. Now, if you're like me, chances are in the course of three to four months, things aren't really turning out the way you thought they were going to turn out. You've faced some obstacles, some closed doors as it relates to that word or that vision. Just wave at me if you have experienced any sort of unexpected challenges as it relates to, and we're three or four months in, y'all, right? And you know, you thought this door would open for your business, but it closed. You thought and believed for healing, but it seems like you're only getting worse. You believed for your child to grow stronger in their faith, but it appears as if they're walking away. There are things that you felt impressed, that you felt in your heart that was a purpose and a plan for the year, but it seems in the natural that God has maybe forgot that maybe you heard God wrong. Have you ever been there? Like, did I hear God? Was that, did I hear the right word? Was that really his voice? I want to look at it this way. Okay. Oftentimes in our lives, we hear that God has a plan, that he has a purpose for our life, that he has a calling, right? That he has a dream, a destiny for us to fulfill. And oftentimes in our lives, I don't know if you can see it in the back corner over there, but this is how we imagine this calling and this plan and this purpose to work out. We, we, this is real clear, <laughs> just steady, incline. We're, get, we're going from strength to strength. We're just moving forward. We're moving up. This is, this is comfortable. I like this one. This is understandable. Right? But I, <laughs> oh, I love God. Oh, he's so good. This, but God's plan is often, I've been praying with a lot of folk lately and talking to a lot of people already in April of 2024, and they feel like God's plan feels and looks like lower. Am I preaching to anyone at the Church of Whitestone? Pastor Torin said lower. I can't get lower than the board here. This, this is how life can feel. Right? And when we, when we come to the awareness that God's got a plan and he's got a purpose and he's got a dream, we assume this and comfort, but what we come to experience for those of us who follow Jesus for a little bit is that it can feel and look a lot like that. Right? There's two powerful verses I want you to get today. First, Isaiah 55 says that God works in mysterious ways. <laughs> it's like, yeah, there's some frustration in that. Amen. Like, mm. well, his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts higher than our thoughts. We need to ponder that. We need to think about that. Proverbs chapter three, verse five says to lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding, but trust him and in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will show you which path to take. Those two verses, when you sum it all up to me, 
essentially say this. If you don't like mystery, don't hang out with Jesus. If you got to have it all clear, and if you need life to be like this for you, don't follow Jesus. Because there's a mystery to Jesus. There's a mystery to his plan. We see in scripture, lean not on your own understanding. This is an adventure, baby. This is a journey of discovering him, walking in faith. If you had a life like this, there would be no need to exercise faith. Hello. You got all the answers. You know it's going to be good. You know all the doors are going to open. No. God gives you a plan, a calling, a purpose, and then there's a journey of faith that we have to exercise, that strengthens us, that develops us. In fact, this may surprise many of you. Some doors in your life must close for you to reach your destiny. Some detours must happen in your life for you to become everything that God's designed for you to become. They are divine detours. They are divine closed doors to help you reach your fullest and greatest potential. And I'm here this morning on an assignment to help you change your perspective, to encourage your faith, to strengthen your faith. Some setbacks are necessary. I read something in Genesis. I'd never seen this before. And it's the story of Noah in Genesis 5. We see this journey, this calling, his purpose unfold. Build an ark. Build an ark. Never seen before. Never, no one's ever built it before. There's no blueprint for it. It's an adventure. It's, it's a kind of crazy one. And for 120 years, this man and his family were obedient to the call of God on his life. They built an ark, gathered the supplies, went to work. People thought he was crazy. He stayed focused. He stayed locked in. He gets to the end of the mission, the end of the job. And the Bible says that rain started to come down. Rain started to gush up from the ground. Water started to gush up from the ground. Boat's done. Animals begin to get loaded onto the ark. But there's one task that's left to be done. One thing. The door must close on the ark as the water begins to pour down. Noah's a little frantic, a little anxious. Is it my job? Did I miss it? Is it one of my, one of my kids' jobs for them to close the door? Is it, is it an animal's job? Like, does a giraffe have to stick its head out and close it? Like, whose job is it to close the door? Yeah. It's very practical. The Bible says the rain really starts to come down. I mean, pour down. And then it says they begin to hear the creaking of this huge wooden door lifting off the ground and closing. Not by the strength of a human hand, not by the strength of an animal, but the Bible says the door closes by the unseen hand of God. Check your Bibles. The Bible says the Lord shut him in. This is cool. This is why I love the Bible. The Lord shut him in. So uh, there's one task. How, imagine this, the sigh of relief for Noah. Like as he's like, oh my God, the door shut. All right, y'all, we're good. Mission complete. We're safe. Purpose is, has been accomplished. How did God fulfill his purpose and promise to Noah? He closed a door. That'll change your life right there. When you understand that some doors are necessary to be closed. God will sometimes close a door. Let me ask you this. Could it be that that opportunity God, God, God allowed to close, that, that door shut because God was protecting you from something? Could God have maybe allowed that relational door to close because he knew in six months you probably would have been hurt? 
Could God have allowed something or someone to say no so that it could keep you from harm? You see, we got to always keep the right perspective that God is in control and some doors must close for our own protection and for our own safety. This was a divine closed door for Noah. Divine. Is God letting some divine doors close to keep you from settling from God's best? Hindsight's 2020, right? Some of you faith believers, you can look back and go, I thank God that relationship didn't work out. I thank God that career path didn't work out. God sometimes will do that. He'll save us. He'll preserve us. He'll allow a door to close so that he can fulfill his promise in our life. Not all closed doors are bad, friend. Not all closed doors are the enemy. God is in control. If you're hitting a setback, a closed door, don't fight it. Trust God with it. Remain in peace. Trust that he's working it out for your good. I'll say this, trust his word when you don't understand his ways. Trust his heart when you can't see his hand. I have a friend, Pastor Torrin mentioned baptisms. I, I met a friend, her name was Penny, at our church a couple years ago at one of our water baptisms. She had gotten water baptized. She came up to me and she said, Nick, I gotta tell you my story. Um, it's crazy. She said, I, I grew up with two alcoholic parents. My upbringing was crazy, it was wild. And she said, I was committed as a young kid that I'm gonna be career focused and I'm gonna be successful. And she said, I was bent on it. So I worked hard, I did everything that I could to be, have a successful career. She said, Nick, I found myself in one of the largest, most successful franchise companies in America. I mean, I was top in my department. I was a top executive and I led the company in sales every single year. 20 years, I was at the top of my department in this franchise company, 20 years. She's like, I was crushing it. And honestly, it was my life. It was all consuming. She said one day, without any warning, her boss called her in and with no explanation said, Penny, I'm sorry, we gotta let you go. In a second, what she had worked so hard, she said, I think she said 30 years, she's part of the company, and in one day, gone. And one day her life changed. She said she drove away from that encounter unfairly treated, no explanation, didn't know what to do. She said, Nick, I had put all my worth, all my value into my career. So now that it's gone and this door had shut, she's like, I was lost. She said, in two, two days after this moment, she said, I got in my car and I had made up my mind that I was gonna go take my life. She said, I contemplated suicide. I figured out what I wanted to do. I got in my car and I headed towards that. It's gonna take my life. She said, I randomly turned on the radio as I, was, as I was driving down the highway. She said, all of a sudden, this worship music comes on and this preacher is preaching and I happen to be on Sirius XM 128 and I'm listening to Lakewood Church and I'm listening to this, this thing about how God has a plan for me and how he loves me and he, he sees me right where he's at and there's a future and a hope for me. And she said, Nick, I became so overwhelmed by God's presence that I had to stop my car and pull over. And right there on the side of this highway, Highway 59 in Houston, Texas, she said, I surrendered my life to Christ. Christ met me through a radio station and reminded me of my purpose. She said, Nick, I got myself together, drove home. She said, two years after a series of God opened doors, new doors. She said, I didn't find myself in sales. I, find, I found myself owning two of my own franchises in a different company. You see, she had sales in mind but God had ownership in mind for her. She goes, Nick, no, she goes, Nick, I'm telling you, this is amazing. She's like, look, had that door not closed, I would have never discovered my faith. And she said, number two, I would have never had the capacity to believe for anything bigger than where I currently was in the company. 
that door closed and it literally pushed me into this space of believing God for bigger. She goes, I was leading sales, now I'm an owner. Friend, I don't know what has closed in your life. I don't know what door has shut. Can I encourage you that God will never allow a door to close if he doesn't have anything bigger and better in store for you? Penny can testify to this. God has bigger and better in store. That's his plan. The path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter and brighter. That is God's promise. You can stand on that. Now, how long does it take? What do we do in these moments? We still trust. We still believe. The door may shut, but God will only allow it if he has something better that he is going to realign us to. Stay in faith today. God has bigger and better in store. Matthew 14, there's this, I think it's a very comical story. Um, I, I, I don't know if it was too comical for the disciples because they're being obedient to what Jesus has asked them to do and, and they push off into a lake on a boat and Jesus is like, I'm gonna go pray on this mountaintop while you guys make your way to the other side. He sends them off. So they're doing something Jesus has asked them to do but they find themselves now in a storm. Some of you, you could be in the middle of God's will and facing some discomfort, but you're right in the middle of God's will. They don't go hand in hand always, comfort and calling. Actually, usually what goes in hand is discomfort and calling. <laughs> Can I get an amen? We don't like to amen that too hard. But it, it's... It's, it's fascinating to me that, that they're, they're doing exactly what Jesus asked them to do, but it's uncomfortable. And they're in the middle of a storm. And all the storm, the storm starts breaking apart the boat, the Bible says, and they're, they're frantic. I mean, they're, they're, they're trying to survive in the middle of this lake. And then the Bible says that Jesus begins to walk on water and they see him from afar walking towards them. But initially, they didn't know that it was Jesus. If you read the scriptures from far off, one of the disciples says, hey, it's a ghost. <laughs> now, it's bad enough when your boat's falling apart and you're trying to survive and not drown. Now you got a ghost coming after you. <laughs> Freddy Krueger's on the water coming towards you. Like, this has just got, like, have you ever been there in life? Like, you're going through something and then it just got worse. It's like, man, I, there's a ghost coming. Now we're really done. We're, now we're really, like, and Jesus gets closer. The disciples recognize that it's him. And he says, guys, it's me. Calm. Gets into the boat with them in the middle of the storm. He gets with them in the middle of the storm. He gets with them in the middle of the storm. He's near. He's close. He doesn't stay far. Could Jesus have calmed the waters from afar? Absolutely. But he gets close. He gets with them. And he says, guys, I'm here. I'm not far off. I'm right where I'm, I'm right with you, right where I asked you to go. And I'm going to be the peace you need in the middle of the discomfort, in the middle of the storm, and I'm going to hold you together. And that's what he is saying to many of you today. I'm going to hold you together. You're right where you're supposed to be. Trust me, I got you in the palm of my hand. Peace covers the storm. Peace covers the disciples. Peace covers the boat. Let me say this. What you think has come to destroy you and put an end to you has actually come to save you. What if you looked at your setback like that? Wow. That setback, that closed door, that obstacle, that unexpected thing that I thought it was going to end me, but it's actually God's using it to redirect me to something better. Friend, that relationship ending, that, 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 that door closing in your career, that's not the end of you. God is still in control. If he's allowed it to close, it's only because he has something better for you. What has come to destroy you and put an end to you, it cannot be possible. God's in control of your life. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. He's written your story. Trust him. 
Here's the good news. This will take a huge burden off of your shoulders. You are not the author of your story. How about that? God's the author of your story. So even when I make a mistake, even when you make a mistake, God's like, hey, you're not big enough to change your story. I'm in control. Repent, turn to me, go towards me, and I'll make sure it all turns out for good. Other people, the way they treat you, bad things that you've encountered, even things you've done, God's still in control. Turn to him today and allow him to continue to write his story for your life. Are you thankful for the grace of God? Are you thankful for the grace of God that even when you make dumb decisions, God's like, you ain't that big. You ain't that strong to rewrite my plan for your life. My grace will cover you. Come to him. God, I was dumb. I don't know what I was thinking. I knew I shouldn't have been with them. I knew I shouldn't have done that. I knew I was putting this over this. God, I'm sorry. And God goes, I got you. You're covered. I'll put you where you need to be. His grace is so good. The thing that you think is going to destroy you is the very thing that saves you. Okay? I love, I love this promise that we can trust him when the unexpected happens. I remember growing up as a kid and just having this dream in me since I was little to play in the NFL, to play football. It was just something that I just grew up having in me. And I had two older brothers, and that's what we would do. We would just play football all, all the time, whenever we could. I grew up in the Midwest. My dad was my football coach. So naturally for me, I just grew into wanting to do this. And I worked towards it. I worked hard for it. And I remember getting into high school and, and training and going on campus visits and seeing football as this thing where I just felt in me, this is what I was called to do. This is what my purpose is. And so finished freshman year, sophomore year, got into my junior year. And by the time I was coming to the summer before my senior year, I was committed to go play football at the University of Michigan State. It was something that was almost like a locked, sealed, signed, delivered thing. Just before the football season started, I went to this church camp. I didn't grow up in church. My parents were divorced when I was three. So going to a church camp for this unchurched kid was crazy. And I saw people lifting their hands and I'm like, why does everybody have a question? <laughs> and they're talking about the blood of the lamb. And I'm like, why is the lamb bleeding? Like, help this kid, I don't understand, literally. I'm like, I don't get it, I don't understand. But I'll never forget that first night sitting in a church camp in Spencer Lake, Wisconsin, where God gripped my heart. And I can't articulate what the preacher said. I can't remember what the person giving the altar call said. I just knew that I needed the grace of God in my life. And the Holy Spirit compelled me. And I came forward to receive Jesus. And my life has never been the same since. Got baptized the next day, and I've been full tilt. Perfect? Absolutely not but trying to chase after a perfect savior. And I remember coming off that retreat, coming home, telling my parents, telling my family, they thought I was crazy. And I remember journeying through that, journeying through losing friends, journeying through being quote unquote popular. And now you're like, what, dude, you're a part of a cult. Like, what are you doing? Like, you don't drink, you don't do this, you don't party. And I'm like, hey, I'm just trying to go after my purpose. I'm just trying to follow God. And I remember coming into football now knowing and having football in its proper place, but feeling like this is my purpose. Now I have faith. Now I'm, I feel like I have something to do and, and a platform, you could say. And so I worked towards it. Third game of the season. Very successful season. First three games were very good. And I remember the first play after halftime, I was running the ball. I plant my leg to cut and a guy hit me on the side of my knee and I fell to the ground. And I knew instantly, because I'd never had a major injury, that it was bad. A couple of days later, after tests, scopes, all that good stuff, I realized that I'd torn my ACL, my MCL, and cartilage in my right knee. It needed reconstruction surgery, reconstructive surgery. And I just, as a young believer, you talk about, I'm like, God, I just gave you my life. I'm faced with all this stuff with my friends. My family don't understand. And now this? Can I, can I be real with y'all today? 
I don't know if you've ever been there, but I've been there a lot. God, what? This wasn't in the plan. I thought this was the plan. <laughs> That's what the preachers was telling me. And I'm here. And I just remember surgery. Scholarship's still on the table. But there was this season of about three or four months where as if God had pushed pause on what I wanted to do so that he could change my heart and shift it towards what I was made to do. And I remember watching, and I remember something happening on the inside. I, don't, I can't even really explain it, but I just remember the desire of my heart was changed. There was a three or four month period where I was just like, man, I feel like I, feel like I want a pastor. Granted, I didn't grow up in church. I, I didn't know really what that meant. I just knew I wanted to help people discover God's plan for their life. I just knew that I wanted people to understand the love of God and the grace of God and that God had a plan for, I just wanted them to discover. I just, it just grew and grew and grew and grew until I knew I was, I'm supposed to be a pastor. I made that decision to chase after that, to go after that despite what others were saying I should do and what was the wise thing to do. I said, this is what God's called me to do. Fast forward 20 plus something years later, I now find myself being a part of something so significant that is changing people's lives around the world, being an associate pastor, being able to do things that I never thought I'd be able to do. And what caused that? A closed door. God rerouted me. But now I can look back in my life, like many of you can, and I can say, I thank God for that. Had that door not happened, had that injury not happened, I would have never had pastoring on the radar. And now I'm doing something I'm so fulfilled doing, so content doing. Is it easy? No. But walking out your calling is something that is so rewarding. Yes. Easy and comfortable? No. But we can trust God when we feel like we're going in circles or we feel like we're faced with a closed door. He'll never allow a door to close unless he has something bigger and better. I'm a living witness to it. I can testify to it. Trust God. But here's, here's what, what can happen, if I can get practical with y'all today. Here's what can happen. Oftentimes, as it was with me, a door shuts, and you're like, I, this was it. All, all, the, like all of my dream, my plan, this is what I put my value into, my energy into, and now it's gone. And what's easy, whether it's a relationship, which a lot of times, that's kind of where I'm going to go today, I don't know, this is what I felt compelled to talk about a little bit today, is we put so much energy into this relationship and it ends, or this vision, this purpose, this dream, it ends and we stay here and we get stuck at the closed door. And we allow hurt and bitterness to grow. I was tempted to do that. Why, God? Why this door shut, man? Don't you see me? Why? Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Why'd that person say that? Why that why, why'd my boss do that? Why is that person hating on me? Why is this? Why did that? And we, we get stuck focusing on the closed door and we don't move forward. And this happens so much relationally, right? We get stuck holding on to something that has expired in God's plan for our life. Let me, can I, can I draw some more? I'm not an artist, but... I'm in Pastor Torrin's house, so I feel the creativity. <laughs> the man can do everything. So here we go. Here's my bus. Can you see the bus? Isn't it phenomenal? I don't know if you can see it in the back, but it's a phenomenal bus here. All right, here's the school bus. And let's just imagine that God's plan for our life is like God's bus route. Can we do that? Like God's plan for your life, it's like a bus route. And when it comes to your relationships, there are some relationships that God will put on the bus, three, four, five maybe, and their rider dies. They're, they're with you through it all. Every season, they're, they're with you through the longevity of God's plan for your life. And some of you know those people. You can think about them and you go, okay, that person, that person, that person maybe. All right, there, there, are, there are certain people that will ride with you through life. No matter if they move away, they stay close. Wherever they're at, you know they're in my life for life. They build me up. They invest into me, right? They're loyal. They got my back. They're my biggest champion, okay? But there are some people, when we hit certain stops in our life, 
where God will open the door. God will open the door and escort them out of your life. It's time for them to leave. The problem is, is those individuals that God is trying to escort out of our lives, we hold on to. And we fight God. And God has closed that door. They were with you for a season. It's okay. Let them go. Guess what? I got new relationships that are coming at the next stop. And I'm going to let them on the bus. And they're going to be there for you during this next season to build your faith, to strengthen your character, to lift you, to breathe life into you, to encourage you. Oh, am I preaching to anybody? We got to get relationships right. Right? God has a dream team designed for you. All right? We got to get around people and be able to discern. This is all about growing in your faith and growing in your journey as a believer. You got to be able to discern when to let go of people in grace, in love, we respect, we treat them honorably, but we say, I, 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 I see now that God is, this, this relationship has, has run its course in my life and I got to move forward. I can't get stuck because God will never let someone leave without having someone better in mind to bring into your life. And it's fascinating and so cool to see God work in hindsight where you could say, man, those people, God, that was expired, but look at who God brought into my life. And that's why I love what Pastor Torn and Lauren, and they didn't tell me to say this, about this church. You're not here by accident. Some of you, these are the relationships God has designed to be around you right now in this season of your life. Lean into it. There are some relationships you had to let go and God is saying, I am planting you in a house where your roots are going to grow down deep and you're going to get in an environment of faith and you're going to connect to people that are going to pull you towards God and not away from him. Yeah. Lean into it. And it may be just one. Lean into it. Own it. Understand the responsibility that God has for you in this journey. Relationships is key. God, God may wean you off some people. Let me put it this way. Some relationships are like scaffolding in our journey with Christ, where, where early on in our journey, he puts people around us, leaders, friends, people with awesome intent. They help us. They give us a good foundation, and, and they're with us for a certain season of our lives. But then as we grow in our faith, God will remove those relationships like scaffolding because he's taken us higher. We're maturing, we're growing, and it's okay to let those relationships go. God used those relationships for a certain period of your life. Now it's time for you to mature and grow and go to new heights with him. And so those relationships, well, why ain't they calling me anymore? Why don't they believe in me anymore? And God is saying, I'm weaning you off because I wanna be the person that you look to and depend on when you absolutely need something. God, I don't know who that was for, but that, that one. I want to close with this thought. A lot of times, um, what disrupts us so much as followers of Christ, when we go through these times of unexpected challenges, obstacles, closed doors, what rattles us so much is, and I've done this in my life, We've made the door or the promotion or the blessing or the dream or the word. We've made that bigger than Jesus. Can I encourage us? As believers, the goal is Jesus. He's the goal. He's the goal. John 10, 9, Jesus said, I am the door. I am the door. You're, wor you're worried about all these other doors. 
And Jesus steps in and he says, I'm the door. Anyone who enters by me, I will lead them. I will guide them. I have green pastures for them to explore. They will discover life, life to the fullest. I am the door, he says. I, I feel like, I said this at 830, I feel like the church, capital C, has oftentimes done a disservice to people because we've made um, answers to prayer more important than the one who answers prayer. We've, we've, made, we've made the plan of Jesus bigger than the person of Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? Can I encourage you? Don't chase dreams. Chase Jesus and let dreams chase you. You get the flip? We don't chase dreams. We chase Jesus and dreams chase us. That's the gospel. It flips the world's perspective upside down. Jesus says in Matthew, seek first, what? The kingdom of God. Seek me first. I am the door. Seek me. I'm the prize. Focus on me. Chase after me. Seek first the kingdom of God. And all of these other things will be added unto you. Oh my gosh, this is so good. I've experienced this. Pastor Torn and Lorna can, can testify to this. So many of you have, have lived this. When you've said, I'm gonna make Jesus the center of my life. He's my focus, nothing is bigger than him. Do you understand? Like I couldn't even have dreamt of being at Lakewood Church or doing anything remotely to what I'm doing right now. I couldn't, I was just a small town kid from Beloit, Wisconsin. None of this was on the radar. And when I got saved, I said, Jesus, you're it. I'm gonna seek you first. And there's been so many things, starting with my family, my wife, my children, so many things that God brought to me as I chased him. Your calling, your purpose, it all comes after you. You don't have to stress about it. You don't have to worry about it. It'll come to you. Chase Jesus and dreams will chase you. It's all about your perspective. This is all about Jesus. This, this whole thing, it's about Jesus. It's not this, whatever this is for you, whether it's your career or your marriage or your finances or your house or your car or whatever. Now, is that, are those bad things? No, but if we're chasing these, if that's it, you're gonna get here and be empty. You're gonna get here and have it for a little while and realize, oh my gosh, this isn't satisfying me. This whole thing when we face obstacles and doors closing and valleys and loopholes and the unexpected, these are all opportunities to discover the nature of Jesus. New attributes and qualities of Jesus. I don't discover his healing power unless I go through a sickness. I don't discover his ability to provide for me and be my source if I don't have this financial setback. Oh, I don't know who I'm preaching to. I don't understand his, his provision and protection unless I go through a storm. Oh, I can't see his ability to be faithful unless I feel like I'm going in circles. Oh friend, these are all opportunities to lean in and discover the nature of Jesus. He's the point. He's the point of it all. And as you follow him and seek him, he transforms you and he develops you and he takes things away and he adds things to you. He brings relationships in and he brings relationships out and we steward it all. We are owners of nothing, stewards of everything. So we just hold everything loosely, say, God, have your way, do what you wanna do. Can we stand to our feet this morning?
Can we stand to our feet this morning? I wrap with this. I say this, Paul, fascinating to me. Paul says in the New Testament, I have learned a secret on how to be content. This is a dude that's been in jail. This, he's been shipwrecked. He's faced opposition. Throughout his purpose, throughout his calling, throughout his journey, he's faced setbacks, obstacles, challenges. This guy has been through it. But he said, I've learned something. I've discovered something. How to be content when I have a lot. How to be content when I have a little. How to be content if the door is open. How to be content if the door is closed. This man has learned a spiritual posture no matter what happens in his life. And he gives us the secret. He goes, you know what it is? Jesus. I fix my eyes of faith on Jesus, the author and the finisher. So doors open, peace. Door closes, peace. Relationship comes, joy. Relationship leaves, joy. Career opens, peace. Career closes, peace. I, it, it doesn't matter. Come high, come low, come rough, come smooth, come door open, come door closed. He says, Jesus is with me. He gives me peace. He gives me joy. I don't have to limit the dream to a destination. I can experience Jesus right where I'm at, right in front of this closed door, right in the middle of this storm, right in the middle of the unexpected. Because Jesus is with me and he's available and I'm gonna fix my eyes on him and give him my focus, his perspective. What are we focusing on?